So, I thought I'd do a little bit of follow-up on the peen plating thing, because there's so much in it, really, that I never went through on the video. Now, the whole point about this channel, and a lot of what we do, is to encourage investigation in others. Now, obviously, people often think that when you're doing science, experimentation, investigation, it's going to cost you a fortune. And my approach to it is that actually it doesn't need to. If you've got an inquiring mind and a desire to know, you don't need to spend an absolute fortune on it. And this is a really good example of that kind of thing. I mean, I bought this thing from eBay and it cost me £145, which is not an absolute fortune. But the amount that we can do with this beyond peen plating actually is huge if you start to investigate it. Now, obviously, we looked at copper plating and aluminium. Now, the reason we looked at that was just because traditionally that's supposed to be very difficult to do, and we saw that we could do it. Now, I would immediately think, OK, what else can we do? And other people have made suggestions. So, for instance, when you do 3D printing with plastic parts, would copper plate. Now, I don't know, but it's certainly worth trying. I mean, a 3D printed plastic part, you're probably going to want to dip in acetone first so that you make the whole thing seal up. Just putting it in here and hitting it with a load of marbles, if you don't do that, you're probably going to break it into pieces. But if you do that and pop it in here, will it coat with copper? Well, maybe not with bare nanoparticles. Maybe you'd have to add something else in there. I don't know what. But peen plating is really well researched. If you put that into a Google search, you'll pull up a ton of um, patents and research articles where you can look at what people have done before, have a think about what you want to do, and you can give it a go for the princely investment of £145. So you could try plating plastics, you could try plating other materials, it doesn't have to be copper. Let's say, for instance, you want to silver plate something, you could try a bit of silver plating using peen plating or gold plating using peen plating, or if you want to do more um, esoteric stuff, like using some of the rare earths, for instance, you could try that. You could try titanium coating with it. There's just such a host of materials and things that you could try in here to try and plate it. But it goes beyond that as well, because this is actually quite a good way for mechanochemical synthesis. So you could try a whole load of combinations of things to see what you could actually synthesise in terms of nanoparticles. Now, if you want to investigate that, then Meccano Chemical in Google Scholar will give you a whole load of research articles to springboard those ideas and what kind of nanoparticles could you actually produce and then what could you do with those nanoparticles. Now, a word on Google Scholar. Google Scholar actually is an immense resource. It's not Google. You have to put Google Scholar. And it's a whole new site. And it only um, searches research articles and patents and it gives you all those articles that people have been working on and been researching on in this field based on the keywords that you put in. And it's a really exciting tool to use. I get an awful lot of emails from people saying to me, where should I begin? Usually the first thing I say is go to Google Scholar, have a read at what's done before, and then have a think yourself. So for the investment of £145 and a bit of work on Google Scholar, this will open up a whole field of investigation for you to be able to do. And I've said before, it's not possible for me to do it all. It just isn't. I'm one person, I have a lifetime, and this is more work than one lifetime. It's more work than one person can do. And it's a really exciting time to be in, because chemistry, is at the centre of what's happening in everything. We're all interested in what will happen on the nanoparticle scale. And here's a cheap way of producing your own nanoparticles of whatever it is you can imagine. Anyway, I thought I'd do that bit of follow-up because I've been getting a lot of emails and comments based on that kind of stuff. And I just wanted to give a few pointers that you don't need a massive amount of money. What you need is an inquiring mind and a little bit of equipment that you use to its fullest possible advantage. And here's a nice bit to get hold of and give a try. Anyway, I thought I'd just mention that, and I hope you found it interesting. Thank you for watching.